By determining just how much the color had been changed, Hubble could work out how fast a galaxy was traveling. It's an effect known as the Doppler shift, and it applies to both light and radar. Hubble found that all the light from all the galaxies was shifted towards the red part of the spectrum. They were traveling away from us at an incredible speed. There have been dramatic improvements in the technology since Hubble's day, and we now have the advantage for the first time of being able to get outside of the Earth's atmosphere. That is, we can go to space, use the Hubble Space Telescope, named after Edwin Hubble, to measure distances to galaxies. Modern astronomers have calculated that we, along with all the contents of our own galaxy, are traveling away from the nearest cluster of galaxies at a million miles an hour. By the end of this program, the whole universe will have expanded a billion miles in all directions. Cosmologists need to find out if there's enough matter in the universe for gravity to stop it expanding and flying apart. There isn't enough matter, normal matter, to account for all the matter we can weigh in the universe. We can actually weigh the galaxy the same way we weigh the sun and the Earth using Newton's laws. We watch the sun go around the galaxy and we use gravity to determine how heavy the galaxy really is. And when we do that, we find there's a lot more out there than meets the eye. Wondering if there is enough matter in the universe to stop it expanding is a prime concern of Professor Stephen Hawking. Born 300 years after Newton, Hawking now holds Newton's old job at Cambridge University. Hawking already knows that the visible galaxies do not produce enough gravity. He now suspects that the universe is full of invisible dark matter. If the universe continues to expand forever, everything will burn out and decay. The amount of matter we observe in stars and gas clouds it's only about 10% of what is required to stop the expansion of the universe and cause it to collapse again. However, there might be other dark matter that we can't see, but which can still affect the expansion of the universe. Dark matter is everywhere. The reason we can't see it is because of its size. Particles of dark matter are so tiny they can pass through anything. Neil Spooner and a dedicated band of astrophysicists are attempting to trap dark matter particles called WIMPs, weakly interacting massive particles, a mile underground at Bulby Mine in England. It just makes up so much matter, so much of the universe, it's at least 90% and probably 99%. If it wasn't for this material, our galaxies would just fly apart. We believe that dark matter is composed of uh, elementary particles that arose in the Big Bang, and um, they're around us all the time, and they're passing through us all the time. Neil Spooner and his team feel sure that any particles that could penetrate through 5,000 feet of solid rock would be dark matter. The team are attempting to record collisions between particles of dark matter and the atoms in a light-emitting crystal. But it's a long vigil that requires an unusual level of patience. Occasionally, like about once a day, you might get one interaction, in other words, the particle comes in, strikes an atom, it recoils and it produces a little burst of light, ordinary visible light which we can detect with our instruments and then amplify and record into our computers. It will take years, but if their equipment successfully detects dark matter, Spooner's team will have discovered the invisible 90% of our universe. But this may not be enough. There may still be too little gravity to stop the universe expanding for eternity. It could be that the universe will basically expand forever and simply dissipate and eventually will end up with a, if you like, a soup of 
rather boring atoms and dark matter diffused around and, and it'll be a sort of slow death and, uh, on, on into infinity and that'll be it. For some, the challenge of predicting the fate of our universe is compulsive. Their passion for cosmology often turns into a lifelong obsession. There are a lot of people engaged in trying to find out what the universe is, and I think it's mostly the same kind of uh, curiosity that kids have when they're six years old or eight years old. It seems to get beaten out of them in school, but uh, we're sort of the ones that, I don't know, the schools didn't affect or something like that. We're, we're still asking those same questions and still uh, trying to get answers to them. Here at Cerro Tololo, cosmologists have made a startling new discovery. Bob Kirshner believes that dark matter may not be holding the universe together at all. They're forecasting how the universe will end by observing one of the most violent cosmic events, stars that explode in distant galaxies with unbelievable ferocity when they reach the end of their life, supernovae. From the brightness of these explosions, Kirshner and his team can tell if a galaxy is near or far away. They measure the distant supernovae as markers to help them work out how fast the universe is expanding. This is a very sensitive system that we're using. It has an electronic detector, and of course it's connected to a gigantic uh, telescope. It lets you see objects which are about 100 million times fainter than you can see with your dark adapted eye. Like Edwin Hubble, they're using the light from distant galaxies to get an accurate fix on the universe's rate of expansion. They thought they would be measuring how much the gravitational pull from dark matter was slowing the expansion rate down. But what they have found has stunned the cosmological community. Well, maybe it's the other galaxy. Rather than slowing down, the universe is speeding up. The galaxies are moving apart faster than ever before. Dark matter is not powerful enough. See, but it looks to me like there's still something there at the location that was there, right there. Mm -hmm. oh, yep. Scientists now believe that the universe will not collapse in a catastrophic fireball, nor will it coast on serenely. Instead, its contents will speed apart faster and faster until lost in the vast blackness of space. So if the picture that uh, is coming from the supernovae is really right, the universe will expand forever. In fact, faster and faster on into the future. Now, this is really not anything to worry about, the, uh, even though it is a kind of a bleak future of an empty, cold, dark universe. What Kirshner may have discovered is a remnant of the original Big Bang. The inflation that started in the very first second of the universe is taking off again. What makes cosmology at the end of the 20th century so exciting is that in fact we understand that the largest things in the universe are really determined by the smallest things in the universe. That there's this connection because at the very early Big Bang, the fundamental forces governing governing the microscopic structure of matter really determined the structures we see today on scales as large as galaxies and superclusters. The shape of